Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool Rolo stepper box. It's a stepper box size to fit for Rolos. How cute is that? I love these stepper boxes. So I got to work creating one to hold small treats and I just love how this looks with Rolos. So let me show you how easy this is to make. We're gonna do the scoring on all the pieces first. So the first one we're gonna start with is Berry Burst. This piece measures five inches by three and a sixteenth. And along the five inch side, we're gonna score this at one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna put that piece to the side. I have another piece of berry burst that measures three and just a hair, so not quite three and a sixteenth, about three and a thirty second. So three and a hair by three and a hair. And we're gonna score this on all four sides at one inch. And then I have four pieces of balmy blue that measure two and three eighths by two and three eighths. We're gonna score these on all four sides at three quarters. Okay, starting with this piece that we just scored at every one inch, I'm gonna first fold and burnish on all the score lines. And I've got four pieces of the Needlepoint Nook Designer Series paper that measure two and 15 sixteenths by seven eighths. And I have a piece of Whisper White with the same size, two and 15 sixteenths by seven eighths. We're gonna stamp the sentiment, thank you so very much from the Butterfly Gala stamp set. We're gonna stamp that in Berry Burst onto the Whisper White piece. And then with this piece in a portrait orientation, we're first gonna glue the sentiment to that bottom section facing me. And I'm just gonna use liquid glue for this. And the rest of the pieces we're gonna glue in the panels above it. And now that piece is ready to go. We're gonna put this off to the side. We're gonna start with the lid. Now we cut that to three and a hair by three and a hair, and that's just to ensure that it was gonna fit over the box base. So I'm gonna fold and burnish on all four sides. And I'm bringing in a template. This is not true to size. This is actually the size of the balmy blue boxes, but we're gonna cut this piece in the same manner. And I like to cut on the back side because I can see the score lines better, but I'm gonna cut up the right vertical score line, stopping at that first horizontal score line. I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and continue to do the same thing all the way around. And then I'm going to come in and notch each of these tabs that we just created. So it looks like this. Now on the back side, I've got four pieces of the Needlepoint Nook Designer Series paper, and these measure 7 eighths of an inch by 15 sixteenths. The one side is just slightly longer than the other side. We want to orient that in landscape mode. And then we'll just work our way around this box lid. Okay, now we can put this lid together and I'm gonna put glue on each of the tabs that we're gonna line up this cut edge with this score line as we put the box lid together. This last tab is always the most difficult to put together, but paper's very forgiving, so just take your time. And there's our box lid. Now we're gonna work on the balmy blue pieces and we're gonna create these in the same way that we created the lid. So I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. All right, then we're gonna come in and cut up the vertical score line stopping at the horizontal. We'll do that on all four pieces, rotating a quarter of a turn each time. And then we're gonna come in and notch all of the tabs. Okay, now we can put all of our boxes together in the same way as the lid. So I'm just gonna apply glue to the tab, line up this cut edge with this score line to form the box corner. And we're gonna do that for all four of the boxes, just working our way around. All right, now we have all the pieces and parts to put our box together. So we're gonna glue these little boxes to this piece, one box at a time. Now because of the way that we glued these tabs, you can pick any side to apply the glue to. Just gonna apply glue all the way on one side. 
And then we're going to line this up at the bottom of this stamped panel. And I'm lining up the bottom of that box with the bottom of the cardstock. I'm also centering it between the side and the score line. And that liquid glue is going to give you a little bit of time to kind of move things into place. All right, so that one's ready to go. So we'll move on to the next box. Again, applying glue on the back side. And then I'm going to fold up this first box to get this one lined up where we want it. So just making sure that this is going to clear the next box. And then I'm going to come in and make sure that that's centered between the score lines. All right, and we're just going to keep moving through glue on the back side, any back side. Kind of fold this first one out of the way so we can focus on the second and third and lining those up together. All right, and then the last box. Now this one we can line up the top edge of the box with the top edge of this piece. You still want to also make sure that it's going to fit, but yep, perfect fit. So there is our little stair steps there. We're going to put in our Rolo candy. And as we close this, we're just going to make sure the sentiment is folded in first, and then this final panel, and then we put our box lid on, which should be a perfect fit, like so. And let's decorate this box top really quickly. I'm going to use the four petal flower punch. I'm going to punch two flowers out of Highland Heather, and then one flower out of Old Olive. The old olive piece I'm just going to put off to the side here. But I'm going to take my bone folder and thumb and just break down the paper fibers of the Highland Heather flowers. Okay, and then I'm just going to wrinkle these up. Now another thing you could do is spritz this with some Stampin' Mist or some rubbing alcohol. Wrinkle it up and then let it dry and then you'll have a lot of really great texture to it. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to wrinkle these up dry. Then I'm going to layer first the old olive piece on the bottom, and then we're going to just stagger the two Highland Heather pieces. So we're creating something like a flower here. I'm going to grab the piercing end of my Take Your Pick tool, and then just going to put a silver brad in the center. Like so, there's our little flower. I'm going to pick up two dimensionals, stick that on the back side of the flower, kind of covering up the brad tails there. Then we can pop this on the lid of our box. Now if you didn't want to do the flower and you wanted to do the designer series paper instead, you would just do a 15 16 by 15 16 piece of designer series paper. I opted not to put that because the flower really covers up this piece, but I love how that turned out. How fun is this Rolo? stepper box. Love it. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I use today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. I have options to subscribe to both my monthly newsletter as well as my daily blog updates, and I'd love to welcome you as a new subscriber. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle, and I'd love to have you join my team of paper pixies. You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like a complimentary copy of one of our catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash catalogs. If you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.